las canciones de nuestro EP. Uh, the, the name of the EP is Edge of Chaos. The songs they were um, the first one that we that I played was I forgot the name. <laughs> it's uh, 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 whatever. I don't remember the names. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and also here, the, the names are different, so whatever. These three songs you can find on the internet uh, by Casa Grande and Hunnis, okay? And now I'm, I'm going to play two songs, two new songs that we, we haven't uh, recorded yet. So they are not complete. I have like a demo version here, but uh, I'd like to play for you because that's new for me. And that's also interesting for me. I'm not going to be playing something that is it's already on the internet, on the social medias, whatever. So we can have like a different experience. You and me, okay? <laughs> so the first song uh, is called Now Here. Actually, this, this song Now Here is also on the internet. But uh, now we are playing, like since we are playing it live, we did uh, an, uh, an extended version. It's a bigger version. So that's the one, uh, what I'm gonna play now. And then it's a new song that it doesn't have a name yet. Okay, so I hope you guys like it. And after that, we vamos a hablar después de esto. Yo quiero saber o que, o que quiero escuchar preguntas de ustedes. Sí, o que quieren saber de mí y de, de guitarra, yo puedo hablar un poco, no, de batería, claro. <laughs> Entonces, es, es esto, ¿ok? Gracias. Eloy, sorry, I'm ah, going sí. to translate a little bit what you just said. Ah, ok, ok. Eh, hello, guys. Hola, chiquillos, ¿cómo están? Mi nombre es Franco, voy a traducir un poquitito. Muchas gracias. A Eloy, de nada. Eh, en muy este fun, momento, bueno, primero tocó tres temas de su proyecto instrumental. Eloy, Honey. Honey's. Honey's. Y a continuación va a tocar dos temas que son inéditos, no los ha grabado, no están en las redes sociales y va a ser una experiencia totalmente nueva para ustedes, tanto como para él, tocar algo que no está en ningún lado. Así que, a ver, saquen los celulares <risa> para que pirateen la canción, plagen. Eso, cabrón, disfrutar. <risa> Dice que son aburridas, no, no lo creo, la verdad.
Va a pasar al crédito electrónico para que sea más fácil para ustedes verlo y él enseñarles sus técnicas. Those videotapes because they were so expensive in Brazil and we didn't have money to buy that. Also, my parents. So uh, I was watching the Modern Drummer Festival all those years from 1998, 2000, 2003. You know, that was like, man, like that, that, that was our, my life, you know. And I remember in Sao Paulo, I had to go to a specific avenue, to the Avenida Paulista. It's the biggest avenue that we have in Sao Paulo. There is only one place where they sold, where they, they, they sold the, the, the Modern Drummer American magazine. You know, so I had to go there, and it was so expensive, but I was buying and trying to, to read English. I was also studying English. You know, and, um, and to play that was a, a, an amazing experience. I never in my life I imagined myself playing at that festival. And I met, I met some incredible drummers there. Uh, I remember that I, I saw Keith Carlock playing, Jojo Mayer, um, Chris Adler, uh, who else? Um, Danny Carey, he also played in that year, but uh, his footage didn't go to the DVD because he was too drunk when oh. he was playing, so he canceled like the, the DVD appearance. And uh, that was smart of him, you know, to do, of doing that. And, um, and that was it, man. It was such a like an amazing experience. I can tell you that my life changed after going to play at the Modern Drummer Festival. That was a whole different world for me. And uh, after the one year after I played at the Modern Drummer Festival in 2006, I did a drum clinic tour in the US, uh, sponsored by my brands, you know, like the. the I was using a different drums back there, but the uh, Paiste, Evans, Promark, I have been using since the Modern Drummer. That's where I got my sponsorship from, from these brands. You know, so, yeah, that was it. Nice. Get this. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, I um, think I, I spoke a lot. I, I no, no, it's perfect. I'm <laughs> just going to summarize it. Don't worry. Yeah, say that that was cool and that's yeah, exactly. Fine. And he like it. Danny Gary was drunk. You no, know? he uh, liked it. Yes. In resumen, Next. chiquillo, bien cortito. El desde el 98, uh, 1928. No, you started playing drums and reading. Yeah, nine, another drum. Nine, 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 eight. Nine, eight. Eight. Yes. Entonces, del 98, eh, que él está leyendo la revista Mother Drummer, que es una revista que me imagino que todos ustedes conocen. Y que en Brasil nos estaba contando que en Sao Paulo la única manera de obtener información era a través de esa revista. Y aparte de DVDs pirata y cosas de ese estilo como la mayoría lo hacía en esos tiempos. Entonces para él fue una gran experiencia ser parte de, del Mother Drummer con Jojo Meyers, con Danny Carey, con Chris Adler y un montón de otros bateristas. Entonces para él fue un momento súper significativo y desde ese momento que él consiguió sus sponsors. Él habla de Paiste, de Evans y Promark. Y un par de marcas más. Eso en resumen, chiquillos. I, I think in my life, like uh, as all the other drummers, I have studied uh, the Paragiros. The, the 40 rudiments, you know, those are the, the, the main uh, patterns that I use until today. Like the, the paradito, double paradito, triple paradito, this kind of stuff, you know. But um, also, I, I have been studying some of my own patterns, you know, like some patterns that I learned from the Brazilian music. Um, where is my computer? I can, I can show to you guys. Oh, can you bring my computer? Yeah. 
that one here. So I have to read to, so I can remember the patterns. Okay. Eh, dice que él Gracias. practica generalmente los 40 rudimentos, digamos, no tiene uno en especial, bueno, para Diddle, doble para Diddle, los 40 rudimentos y que aparte él también estudia patrones que vienen de la música brasileña. Y eso es lo que nos quiere mostrar ahora. I was learning, like how at the beginning when I was learning the drums, uh, for the first four or five years I was just practicing Brazilian rhythms. That was my my main thing. I just discovered metal when I was 14, 15 years old. So I spent like more than that, like six, seven years. Uh, where are you going, bro? <laughs> Get out my drums, man. <laughs> And uh. And, uh, and I remember that I was just practicing Brazilian rhythm, so that's my my base, you know, that's from, like, from everything came from. So one day when I, like, some years ago, I was trying to, to really, like, uh, to, to, to discover the patterns that I was using to play with Sepultura, to do my drum solos. So I saw, I noticed that uh, mostly of the, these patterns, they were coming from the Brazilian music. So I wrote down a little, uh, some of them, so I can show to you. Okay, the first pattern is like, um, I'm thinking all about 16th notes, you know, like one bar of uh, 16th notes. So, but I'm, I'm thinking about different groups, groupings of note. So the first one that I have here, it's gonna, it's a five, five, and six. Oh, and also um, this, this lesson, I'm gonna talk to the guys of Music Hall and uh, we are gonna make a way to send to all of you. Okay, so all you are gonna have this, the charts in your email o whatever, ¿ok? Eh, dice que, claro, tiene transcrito algunos patrones y se los va a enviar a todos ustedes al Gmail. First one is like five, five and six. ¿Ok? So if we think about 16 notes in one bar, gonna be right, left, right, left, left. That's always the pattern of five notes that I make. F right, left, right, left, left. And to finish the pattern, it is uh, right, left, right, right, left, left. Six notes. Okay, so I'm gonna play for you. Nos va a enseñar un patrón de 16 notas compuesto de 5, 5 y 6. Está pagado.
and the first note of the D note. So I studied with until I get to a, a, a point, a level that I don't think anymore about the pattern. I just sit and play, you know, randomly adding accents, whatever I want. You know, so. Uh, it sounds very Brazilian, right? I think so. I don't know because I'm Brazilian. So I don't know if it sounds Brazilian or not. You know, so <laughs> but uh, that that's the, the the way that I think. That's the pattern that I the patterns that I use the most. You know. Well, let me show you a second example. There, there are. I have here like uh, seven exercises, but I'm gonna show you the the, the couple of them. Eloy, can oh. you give me just one minute to translate oh, yeah, sure, the sure. set? Of course, yes. eh, a grande rasgo, chiquillo, bien resumen. El, los patrones son de 5, 5, 6, o sea, derecha, izquierda, derecha, izquierda, izquierda. Y el de 6 es derecha, izquierda, derecha, derecha, izquierda, izquierda. Bueno, ahí están los patrones. Yes. Perfecto. Eh, primero lo hace con la negra, ¿no? Quarter notes, isn't it? At the beginning, when you were playing those. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Entonces, después lo cambia el patrón de Bayao, que es parte de, de la música brasileña, y después lo cambiaba samba. Entonces, una vez que él dominó ese groove, empezó a cambiar los acentos. ¿ya? Entonces, no siempre iban al principio de cada secuencia, de 5, 5, 6. Por ejemplo, podía acentuar la segunda, tercera, cuarta nota. Y después se dio cuenta que cuando ya lo dominaba, podía él cambiar los acentos de manera musical, sin seguir un patrón, sin estar pensando, sino que donde se sentía mejor el acento. Eh, a grandes rasgos eso. Y ahora, bueno, puede hacer lo que quiera. En el fondo. Eso. Perfecto. Y algo que puedes decir ahora is that uh, when I'm playing nowadays, I, I don't try to use any more the paradiddles or the rudiments. Of course, they, they, can, they, can, they come out naturally because it's impossible to forget about them. You know? But uh, most of the time, I'm using my patterns, my own patterns. I'm trying to, to forget. I'm always trying to forget my way of playing, what I played yesterday, and to be a new drummer every day. You know? But it's impossible, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> yes. um, dice que no piensa en patrones, ya no piensa en rudimentos. Eh, la idea para él, para ser un mejor baterista, es dejar de pensar en la técnica y que solo piense en la musicalidad, aplicando la técnica, pero de manera inconsciente. Eh, casi. Casi. <laughs> claro, casi. Sí. Casi. Sí. Yo, I'm not thinking anymore the, the patterns, like exactly the, the 40 rudiments. I'm thinking about my, my own patterns. So I'm, ah, I'm always, okay. yes, I'm, I'm trying to don't play the regular paradiddles, the regular rudiments. So the Brazilian patterns, you're yes. thinking. Okay. Some, yeah. something no like piensa that. en, claro, los patrones americanos, sino que piensa en sus propios patrones para sonar como él suena. Perfecto. Awesome. Uh, the second one is uh, another 16th note pattern, so it's going to be 16th notes. Um, so it's, there are five groups in this one. I'm playing a group of three, uh, three groups of three, one group of five, and then one group of two notes. Okay, so the groups of three, they're going to be right, left, left. Again, the group of five is going to be right, left, right, left, left, and the group of two, right, left. Okay, so it's... It's, it's easier if I show to you instead of just saying like the, the notes. The, the
I'm ge and again, I'm just playing the accent on the first note of each group. Okay, so I did the same thing. I was playing with on, t on top of the bayon ostinato and then on the samba ostinato. different rhythms and uh, drum fills with that. Okay, so there are seven patterns and I'm gonna send that to you, okay? I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna talk to, to Rodrigo and we're gonna see how we're, we're gonna make it, but I hope you guys are gonna get it. Nice. Uh, Valeu. Um, what's your question? Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, exactly, exactly. But it, um, um, I have been teaching that, showing that to my students, and it takes a long time to incorporate, to absorb all these patterns, you know, like the... <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But uh, like, oh, always when I try to learn a new pattern, it takes me time, you know. You, you need at least months until we start using that in a musical way. Because if you try to use that when you are learning, you know, like I, I just learned a pattern and I want to apply that to, um, to a song or to a drum solo or something, it, it, it's going to sound fake. It's going to sound like not musical. Adapted. Yes, you have to make it for you. Like uh, it, it needs to come out of you naturally. So you don't have to think about that. So when you play it, it doesn't, it's not going to look that you are thinking. I tell that to all my students, you know, when they are playing that, uh, I also tell them to make like a loop, play one bar of a, dro a groove and one bar with a drum fill. And, uh, and, and I can see when they are thinking about the pattern. It's like, man, this is sound like shit because you are thinking too much. Stop sh thinking about the pattern, just play it. Oh, but I cannot stop thinking about it. So you have to practice more. You, know, you have to spend more time on the pattern until it becomes like a uh, part of you, so you don't have to think anymore. Like example, when you play a paradiddle, a uh, single paradiddle, you don't have to think about that. You know, when you're gonna do a drum fill with a paradiddle, it's like, you just, you just do it, because I'm not thinking, and it sounds good. So that's the same thing, it takes time, maybe six months. Super. Um, <laughs> No, pero, eh, en resumen, chiquillos, eh, muchos patrones dicen que hay que estudiarlos mucho antes de utilizarlos ya sea de manera musical o en un solo. Porque dice que cuando lo ocupan mientras lo estás aprendiendo suena falso, suena mal, suena como mierda, literalmente, shit. 
Eh, entonces lo que él dice de que eh, lo practiquen al menos unos seis meses para que se transforme en lo que es el paradigma para la mayoría de nosotros, que nadie tiene que pensar en el patrón derecha, izquierda, derecha, derecha, izquierda, derecha, izquierda, izquierda, sino que aparece de manera natural. Entonces, seis meses practicando el patrón para que se torne en algo donde tú puedas apagar tu cerebro y poder tocarlo musicalmente. Perfecto. Para que no suene es como un huevón. <risa> So, uh, for example, uh, like uh, during the pandemic that I was at my house, I was uh, with a, an electronic kit, just like this one. Not like just this one, because this one is fancy. It's expensive. It's, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice one. But I have like a, the DTX uh, 522. 522, that's the number? Yeah, yeah five, 5,000. 200, 5, 6, and 500. <laughs> Slash. Uh, no so I have that, that drum kit. So for six months, I was just playing and practicing in an electronic kit, in a Yamaha kit. And uh, I, was, I remember that I was studying a pattern that was only with groups of five notes, just uh, like the group that I showed to you guys. And, um, and I, I spent like five, six months just studying that, not just studying that. Of course, I was playing other things. But uh, I was really like, all, every day I was at least like 30, 40 minutes just playing these patterns of five notes. So I'm gonna show for you how was the process of learning the, 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 this pattern, you know? So I started playing um, 16th notes, but uh, the pattern is right, left, right, left, left. The same that I showed to you. Eh, durante la pandemia estuvo estudiando patrones de cinco notas de derecha, izquierda, derecha, izquierda, izquierda. Ah, y usaba una batería electrónica Yamaha durante la pandemia. Eso, Yamaha, Yamaha, Yamaha. Polyrhythm. Poly, poly yeah. So for us, master in polyrhythm. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, we say that's a uh, ritmo cruzado. Mm. We're crossing the rhythm, you know? Uh -huh. We have the... Sí, polimetria. So we have the five against the, the four. Five against the... Eh, el patrón de cinco notas, lo que él está haciendo es marcarlo como si fuese de un cuatro cuartos. Entonces se produce un desplazamiento y tienen que pasar cinco compases para que la vuelta completa de ahí vuelva a caer en el uno. Eh, seisillos. Seisillos. Yes. <laughs> or, or to smoke. Um, dice que, que ese mismo patrón de cinco notas lo pasó, porque primero estaban 16 avos ¿no? en semicorchea, pero lo cambió a seisillos. Entonces da siempre una sensación distinta. Seisillos, ¿o qué más? Ok, perfecto. like th 30 measures to complete no, the five, five, ah only five, five. It's like 30. It's, uh, I'm lost. Okay. 
Bueno, eso, dice que ahora como son prácticas en seisillo, la vuelta es más larga, porque en realidad donde tienen que caber seis notas, él pone cinco, pero en el espacio de... No, en la misma subdivisión de seis, él nota cinco. Entonces, en la sexta nota es la primera de ese bloque de cinco. Ok, entonces la vuelta es más larga y otra forma de, de tener más ejercicio heterométrico. En seisillos, claro. So then what I was doing was to make it natural for me. So I was playing that every day for 40 minutes at least, you know. And also trying to incorporate that into drum fills, drum grooves, in a natural way. Um, dice que lo practicaba todos los días al menos 40 minutos con la intención de hacerlo natural para él. Como... By the end, you have to make a correction, you know, like by, if you're just playing four tempos, you have to make like a correction to, to finish on the right hand, or you're gonna finish on the left hand. I was trying to spread all the accents, the same thing that I did with the, the other uh, class. You know, I was trying just to play this accent in a random way, but uh, trying to sound musical, trying. <laughs> And uh, I was doing also the same thing, but uh, in groups of seven, groups of nine. Yeah. So it's taking me forever to learn all these patterns. Mm -hmm. But uh, finally, I can say that I, I, I'm like, I have more freedom to, to play them, you know? So, but that's the way that I study. That's the way that I practice. Bueno, él, él dice que practicaba este patrón de cinco notas. Siempre era un patrón de groove y un patrón de fill, eh, o, o utilizando el patrón este, un patrón de cuatro cuartos y utilizando el patrón de cinco notas y muchas veces su uno terminaba con la mano izquierda. Después con el tiempo lo fue evolucionando y tratando de cambiar esos acentos, manteniéndolo de manera lo más musical posible, tratando, según sus palabras. Y después con el tiempo ese patrón de cinco trató de inventar patrones de siete, de nueve y practicándolo mucho tiempo y eso dio muchos patrones y estuvo horas y horas practicando. Perfecto. Gostaria de saber se tienen outra 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 pergunta? Ah, tá.
Acá, eh, después usted, ¿qué? ¿cómo va? Uh -huh. And make music is like, uh, for example, Andreas uh, came with an idea in the guitar, or you came with an idea in the drums, or Derek, I don't know, of s all that together and start jamming. Oh yeah, most of the ideas of Sepultura, they are either born from the from the drums or from the guitar. Okay. You know, so when we are like we have some free time, we are not touring or we are like just have like a vacation. I like to to go to the drums and record new ideas that I have. I used the EAD-10 from Yamaha, <laughs> you know, do you know that? Do you guys know that? The, have you ever seen this, this gadget? It's amazing, it's amazing. All my videos that you guys watch on, on the Instagram or YouTube, most of them I have, uh, they have recorded with the EAD-10. Yeah, they day, yeah, they yes. It is incredible, the Yamaha. Muy one, so oh yeah, it's es muy bueno, todos los videos, que están en in, mi in Instagram, en in YouTube, most of them, they are recorded with the EADDS. La, <laughs> la pregunta. <laughs> no, sí. pero, pero, pero es verdad, es verdad. Aquello es increíble. Cuando solo un, un adendo, un adendo, pero. When I went to the Yamaha, Brazil, that was like many years ago, I was doing some rehearsals there because they have like a very nice uh, place in Sao Paulo. And the guy of the, 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 the artist relations in Brazil, Andre, he came to me and says like, man, you have to check this, this thing, this gadget. It's amazing. I was like, ah, whatever, man. No, it's, it really is. You have to try it. And once I tried that, it's like, oh my God, this is super cool. She records stuff for the internet. It's super fast. You know, it's super, like, it's, it's good for the internet, for the social media, that, that's incredible. And also for doing the demos of Sepultura. The demos, that's so easy because I just plug straight to the computer and I, it's, it's done, it's ready. I can start recording, you know. It works like, a, how can I say, like an interface. You know, you don't need, like, to have another interface. Just plug, like, USB directly to the computer and you start recording with that. Yes, on the kick drum. No, no triggers, no triggers at all. That's like, that's magic. I don't know how they do that. Japanese people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese people, they are crazy. And, um, but uh, going back to the question, and I also, and then I record these new ideas, these new elements. Of course, I don't, I don't record those basic grooves, like boom, scupa, boom, 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 scupa. No, I'm not gonna send that to Andreas, you know, because somehow, like, at some point, it's gonna be there, this kind of groove, like, tupa, 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 this skunk bit. No, I don't, I don't record that kind of stuff. I just record something that I, f I think it's different, that might, like, um, create a new song, create, like, new, new parts or new cells, you know, so that's the thing. And then we start changing these ideas. He sent me also his guitar ideas, and, we, when, uh, and then we, we try to record, like I record my drums on top of his guitar yeah. ideas, I send him back. So we, we are building the songs this way. Until we have like a five or six different like idea songs, and then we, uh, we go together, we do a rehearsal to play those ideas to, to, to see if they sound good when we play together, and to build them from that, you know, to start like constructing the, then from that. Oh, yeah. Eh, yes. eh, la pregunta tenía relación cómo compone Sepultura hoy en día y él dice que vienen de dos fuentes, o son riffs de Andreas o son ideas rítmicas de Eloy. Eh, él dice que cuando, generalmente componen cuando no están de tour y esto él lo hace personalmente con el EAD-10 de Yamaha, eso, chichín. Y, y dice que es excelente, que lo conoció en Brasil y que es un excelente producto que se lo recomienda a todos y que en realidad una vez que él compone sus partes de batería solo le envía a Andreas las partes que él encuentra interesantes no le envía un tupa tupa ni le envía algún group básico porque eso eventualmente llegará ahí él solo le envía las ideas interesantes al igual que Andreas se le envía a él eh, luego se juntan a editarlas, cambiarlas, manipularlas, ver si les gusta, si pueden mejorarlas en el fondo. Y luego que terminan todo ese proceso, se juntan a tocarlas. Oh, muy bueno, muy bueno. Y también recuerdo, también I like to record some ideas on the electronic drums. On the pandemic, I was doing that a lot, using the, 
uh, EQ to, to record. But uh, that's it, man. That's it. Every day, I like to, when I, when I have time at home, I have the, a drum studio. It's very close to my house, just one block away. I have my, my space where I can, I can play the drums because I live in an apartment. So, yeah. So, but I, I go there and I, I like to spend at least like 30 minutes at the beginning just letting the, the ideas flow, you know. Um, that's something that I always tell to my students. Like when you want to like uh, d uh, develop something different, something new, to have new ideas, do that at the beginning of the day or the, at the beginning of your uh, practice, practice time because your mind is free. You're not like, you're not tired of playing. You're not like uh, exhausted of playing, you know? So all the ideas, they are more fresh. Your mind is fresh. So I always keep like 30 minutes just to randomly play the drums and see what I, what it comes out from me. Comes out from me. That was a weird phrase. Like, <laughs> comes out from me. Uh, él dice que, que él cuando va a practicar le recomienda a sus estudiantes que los primeros 30 minutos sean lo más libre posible eh, y que tú trates de proponer nuevas ideas porque tu mente está más libre, está menos estresada, hay menos cosas, menos cansada en el fondo. Eso a grandes rasgos. Perfecto. Ah, pero él tiene una, tiene una pregunta así. Ah, Thank you, thank you. Two? No, no, just one, man. Oh, depends. It depends a lot. On my uh, instrumental project with Honeys, yes, we always use the, the click track because we are playing with the, 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 the computer, with all the other instruments. We don't have musicians on stage, so the bass, the piano, everything else, the orchestra, it's always on the, on the computer, on the sample, so we have to play with a click track. Uh, with Sepultura, like the, the new songs, the, 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 the songs from Quadra, our latest album, we play them also with a click track because they have uh, many layers of instruments. They have also orchestra, uh, piano, uh, you know, so we use the click track for the new songs. For the old songs, no, never, you know, just oh. for like, we just play like four or five songs with a click track in a show. La pregunta tiene relación si siguen ocupando el click, el metrónomo al momento de tocar en vivo. Él dice que en su proyecto solista obligatoriamente sí, porque no hay músicos. Son solo capas, eh, orquestas, bajo, piano, todo es computarizado. Y en Sepultura, todo lo que sea del disco cuadra, también lo tocan con clic, porque también hay secuencias en el fondo, hay apoyos. Pero los temas viejos generalmente no los tocan con metrónomo, con clic. Sí, sí. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Yes, actually, yes, because like um, um, I'm not saying that with Sepultura we don't have freedom to do whatever we, we do, but it's metal music, you know. I feel very happy, of course, in, of playing in Sepultura because the guys, they have me freedom to play whatever I want to play, to bring all my, my history, all my, my culture, all the, the, the things that I believe in, and then I don't believe. So I have total freedom in Sepultura, but it's, it's metal music, you know? <laughs> but with Honeys, I think that I, I have some uh, more freedom in a different direction. I can explore a different world, you know? There is no limits, there is no boundaries. I just can play whatever I want, you know? So that's good. That's that's something that I and I always I have always liked to to listen to um, instrumental music, to fusion, to jazz, you know. So it makes it made sense for me to 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 create to do like a, a side project uh, by Sepultura. El, la, la pregunta tiene relación a cómo nació el proyecto instrumental que tiene y él dice que. Eh, no es que en Sepultura no tenga libertad, de hecho en el disco Cuadra él hace prácticamente lo que quiere, eh, le dan toda la libertad posible, pero está limitado por la estética del metal, siempre va a ser metal. Eh, y él tiene um, también, um, ¿cómo decirlo?, un background eh, de música más fusión, música instrumental, entonces en este proyecto él puede tocar 
cualquier cosa que se aleje incluso de los parámetros del metal. Perfecto, gracias. Uh, aquí primero, aquí y después así. Uh -huh. Valió. Private teacher. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. I never went to a music college or a music school. I always had a private teacher, teachers, different teachers, because I, I studied with four different drummers. And uh, but uh, I, I went to them to the university actually. I studied musical production, but it was a very bad uh, university in Brazil, like very <laughs> shitty, because my parents they were like, "Hey, you need to do a university. You have to bring us like you know." So I, okay, I'm gonna do it. But I, I couldn't finish because I was I was traveling back there, so I just I didn't pass the last year of the university. So but yeah, that was uh, yeah. that was pointless doing a university, you know. But uh, yes, I, I I studied with different teachers, private teachers. La pregunta es si es que había estado después. La pregunta es si es que había estado en una academia o en alguna universidad para estudiar batería. Y él dice que no, que tuvo five different teachers. Four. Okay, que tuvo cuatro profesores. Aquiles Priester was one of them. Sí, sí. The 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 first one was a guy from São Paulo. From São Paulo, no, it's from Santo André. It's like São Paulo. It's a big city with like small cities together, surrounded by small cities, but they are all one. You know, we call it the big São Paulo because you have like five or six small cities just around Sao Paulo, but they make part. They are like inside. You don't see like the difference between Sao Paulo and the other cities because they are all attached to each other. So I was born in this other city called Santo André. It's like, I don't know, like uh, five kilometers away from Sao Paulo. It's really close, you know? And I studied a guy with a guy from there. His name is Lenilson Silva. He was, uh, he was playing with more like samba stuff. So I learned a lot about Brazilian rhythms with this guy. And then I studied with a guy called uh, Lauro Lelis. He used it to play with Tom Zé. It's a very creative Brazilian musician. And then with Achilles, Achilles Priester. And then my, my, my uh, last teacher was Cristiano Rocha. He's also a very good, incredible musician, Brazilian musician, who, who plays Brazilian music. Eh, lo que él añadió también es de que él sí efectivamente estudió producción musical, ¿no? Musical, sí, sí. Pero no lo terminó, porque en realidad él viajaba mucho, tocaba mucho, entonces no terminó la producción musical. Y él dice que al principio él estaba en, en, en Sao Paulo en sí, pero Sao Paulo es una ciudad grande que son muchas ciudades pequeñas que en conjunto hacen el Gran Sao Paulo y que él vivía como a 5 kilómetros de Sao Paulo, que era una distancia súper corta. Entonces ahí fue tomando distintos... Professors generally, samba especially? Samba, or? yes, yes. Exactly. Professors of samba generally. Yes, yes. 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 Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Uh, before I joined Sepultura, I was almost leaving the drums, stopped playing the drums. When I was, because I, I started very early, with seven years old. In all my life, when I was like 11, 12 years old, I decided like, okay, I want to be a drummer. That's what I want to do for a living. So I wasn't studying the school anymore. Well, of course, I was studying kids. Don't stop studying, going to the school. It's really important. <laughs> That's not what, what, what I'm saying, you know. But uh, all like my focus that, that was into the drums, into the music. So then I made 18 years old and uh, I had like some personal problems in my family, you know. So I had to work, start working. That, that happens in Brazil a lot. Like when you make 18 years old, like what are you doing? You have to work, make money. You know, we don't have any other choice. You don't have time to study. And also my parents, they didn't have the condition to like send me to a university where I could like just spend 
five, six years studying without making any money. You know, so I had like, okay, what I'm gonna do? Play the drums. You know, I have been playing playing the drums for so long, but I couldn't make any money back there. I was playing with so many different projects. I was playing with six different bands. Uh, I was playing with Andre Matos. He was the singer of Angra, the former singer of Angra. You guys should might know that yeah, yeah. Angra, Viper. Yes, yes, uh, Andre Matos. But uh, we didn't make any money from that gig. Any money. Like, that was, like, shitty. And then um, I was playing with a pop band, uh, a Catholic band, uh, another new metal band. Uh, what, el what else? I don't remember, man. Yeah, two met I was, like, uh, Andre Matos, Akla, Iave, Gloria, um, Dois, pop band, and I was doing also shows, like private shows for companies, you know, playing cover music, like playing Beyonce <laughs> and Jay-Z, uh, whatever, Britney Spears, you know, that the kind of stuff. Uh, Despacito. Todo aquilo. Si. Para hacer La Plata. La Plata, si. Pero, but it was very difficult, man. And then, and then, by this, and I was also going to the university at that same time, and I couldn't make make money to to leave, actually. So that when I, I look at my mom, you know, and I, I said to her like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, you know. Maybe I'm gonna work at a supermarket or something else where I just go there, and I like I'm gonna have like a, make some money, you know, like to I'm gonna work and I'm gonna have some money. But on drums, playing music, it, it wasn't uh, certain that I, I would make money. So that was a biggest, uh, a big problem. You know, that was a big issue. Until I joined a band called Gloria, and now then we started traveling more inside Brazil, and then we played in Rock and Rio. And they said, "Putura, the guys saw me playing in Rock and Rio, so they invited me to to do an audition, a test." So then I was like, oh, "Okay, now I can only play the drums and don't think more about like money." Because when I decided to play the drums, like I I, I didn't want to be rich. I think everybody who decides to become a musician, and I'm, I'm not rich until today, that's what I'm saying, now I'm rich, no. And I, because when I choose to play the drums, I didn't wanna, like, we are, we're not aiming for money. We're not aiming for getting rich by like a, a cool house or a cool a car, you know, like that's not the thing. We just wanna live through the music, you know, have the minimal conditions to pay our bills, to be happy and do whatever we wanna do, to live through art. And uh, also my students, they asked for me, oh, do you think I'm gonna get there? How, how do I get there? It's like, what is to get there? Wh what's the meaning for you to get there? You wanna be rich, happy, or just play the drums, leave your music? Because for me, to get there was just to live through my instrument. You know, just pay my bills, have food, have like a house and that was it i didn't i, I did, i'm not i wasn't asking more than that for more than that you know but it was also very tough very tough in brazil but uh, what i can tell you and i i tell that to my students as well to just like do all the the different layers of a musician you have like to teach you have to do recording sessions you have to have your own band the your music you have to play with artists you have to be a sideman uh, you know, you have to do everything, you know, but, you, you know, if you do these different layers that are, in, like, they are, that, that are inside a musician uh, job work, then, like, that should be good. I have a lot of friends in Brazil, some drummers, that they live in different cities, a little bit far from Sao Paulo, that they live well because they teach, they play every weekend with uh, country uh, gigs. They have their own music. That's also important to show your personal style, your personal thing. And uh, they, they do like um, online uh, courses, online teaching, and that, that works for them. You know, they, they can live and they are happy. So it depends, you know. No, um, my pleasure, man. Un resumen, chiquillos. Eh, pregunta si alguna vez pensó en abandonar la batería. Y él dice que empezó siendo un baterista a los siete años. Y ya a la edad de los 18 eh, no estaba haciendo dinero con la batería, no podía subsistir con la batería y culturalmente en Brasil dice que a los 18 años tú ya tienes que empezar a hacer dinero, tienes que empezar a trabajar. Entonces llegó ese momento eh, donde ya estaba participando en seis proyectos, 
eh, dentro de algunos con artistas muy conocidos, por ejemplo el, el, vocalista, el ex vocalista de Angra, pero ningún proyecto le daba dinero. Entonces él eh, consultó con su madre y su madre le decía como, eh, ¿qué voy a hacer? Tengo que trabajar en un supermercado, por ejemplo, para ganar dinero. Y ahí estuvo, encontró a Gloria, es el nombre del proyecto, ¿no? Sí, Gloria, es una banda, un brasileño. Entonces una de sus bandas, Gloria, eh, pudo tocar en el Rock in Rio. Y ahí fue en el Rock in Rio donde Sepultura lo vio y lo llamó para audicionar. Y ahí fue recién el momento donde él dijo, ok, no puedo dejar la batería, eh, ahora puedo subsistir gracias a esta banda. Y dice también de que, bueno, obviamente como baterista no te vas a hacer rico, pero la idea es que tu motivación sea tocar y poder vivir, tener un techo, tener una casa, poder comer, tener comida. Eh, y en el fondo si tú quieres vivir de la batería tienes que hacer todos los aspectos de la batería, o sea, enseñar batería, hacer sesiones de batería, hacer workshops, ¿no? talleres, eh, sesiones, tocar distintos estilos de música, o sea, dedicarle tu vida al 100% a la batería, pero no solo esperando tocar, sino que enseñar, tocar, grabar para otros artistas. Yeah, but uh, you have to find what's the the best for you. You know, like what do you really want to do? I mean, I like to to do everything that involves the drums. I like to teach, I like to I love to be here with you guys talking about drums. And you guys came here to listen to me. That's like such a big honor. You know, I'm really happy of doing that. I'm also really happy playing shows, you know, so I'm happy like to work with music in general. So if I'm like having the contact with the drums, then I'm happy. That's my thing. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, 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 Ali, Ali, Ali. Mm -hmm. That's one. Um, that's one. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Okay, that's a that's a creative <laughs> question. That is a creative question, but it, yeah. <laughs> the third question, real? No, third, no, 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 no. It's impossible. No, no. So, no. no de hecho, la última pregunta, chiquillos. Así que. I I have to also play the Sepultura songs if you guys wish. Bueno, uh, esta era la. No. La okay. <risa> no, esa era la, la última pregunta. Pregunta si tiene algún hábito eh, que realice todos los días, por ejemplo, ejercicios. Pero ejercicio, me ref ¿te refiere a ejercicios? Ok, cualquier cosa, cualquier hábito constantemente. Y la segunda pregunta tenía relación, ¿cuál es su tema de Slipknot favorito que le gusta tocar más, no, de ello y de Sí, Yes, I have like a routine when I'm in Brazil at my house. When we are tra traveling, we are, when we are on tour, I actually don't have a routine because it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Every day we are in a different place, a different situation. So and that's also cool to don't have a routine. But uh, when I'm in Brazil, I like to go to the gym every day. I have been working out since I, am, uh, since I was like 18 years old because I started feeling pain uh, while playing the, play, playing the drums. Uh, Tenjinichi, do you guys understand that? Yeah. Tenjinichis. So I had that and then I, I started like uh, going to the gym lifting weight and I never uh, felt pain again, you know, so I never stopped going to the gym that it really helps me to stay in shape, to play the, the Sepultura songs because that's very energetic. They are very demanding. So, and that's it. That's the only thing that I do. I go to the gym. I do a, like a regular training. I don't do anything specific for the drums because the, the, the training specifically for the drums, I do on the drums. I sit and play. That, that's the thing. You know, the, guy, the guy's like, oh, what do you do for playing faster? I just sit and play. What do you do to get more like, to play like uh, harder, to play the whole show? How do you keep that, the energy? I just sit and play the, every day, you know? So th that's it. And I, I go to the gym. La, la pregunta es, bueno, si tiene algún hábito. Y él dice que en tour es imposible tener una rutina. Eh, pero cuando está en Brasil, él va desde los 18 años al gimnasio. Pero él dice que más que nada para evitar dolores, porque a los 18 años empezó a sentir tendinitis, dolores, y el entrenamiento, después de que empezó a entrenar, no volvió a sentir ninguna molestia. Eh, dice que no tiene ningún entrenamiento físico específico para la batería, ningún ejercicio de gimnasio para la batería, porque él dice que para mejorar la batería hay que tocar batería. Sí, perfecto.
uh, de la, la, la canción de Slipknot. Uh, I recorded some covers on my YouTube channel, and those two songs, they are my, my two favorite. It uh, was uh, 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 Erratic Anten and uh, People We Call Shit. Those are my, f my two favorite ones, and they are from uh, Joy Jordan time, you know? And he's such a good, he was an incredible drummer. Uh, I admire him a lot. You know, he, he created a style of new drumming. You know, you see all the kids like trying to cop him, so the, he's very influent. Did you get to know him? No, I never met him, never had the chance. Thank you, man. Esa era la última pregunta, chiquillos. Última. No more. No. No more questions. Pero que no, Yamaha. No. no. <laughs> Dice que admiraba mucho a Jordi Son en todo caso y nunca tuvo la oportunidad de conocerlo. Yo tengo que tocar más 15 canciones. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Otra, una no última. Questions. Aquí, usted. La, de este, tienes que ser muy buena. Esta última pregunta. Y una sola, no doble. Y una sola, no, no, no dos. Ajá. Man, uh, who, the people who know, who doesn't know, but, uh, That was on April. I broke my leg, my right leg, and I I can show to you the scars that I have on my leg. The soldier, pack! Oh! Imagine that. <laughs> I break it again. <laughs> so here I have like the the scars from the surgery that I have. Also, my bone is a little the the the, the muscle is a little bit weird. That was the healing process of my the natural healing process of the the muscle. So. Even even uglier, so even uglier, but it, but it works. That's the most important thing. So I fell out the stage on a show in April. Uh, we were playing in US. We were doing a tour there. Uh, uh, we were playing in where was, El Paso, Texas. So I had to fly back to Brazil because the uh, American health system is like a little bit bad, super bad. So I had to go back to Brazil to have the surgery. And I, have, uh, I was very well assisted. My wife, she's a doctor. She's a, a plastic surgeon, you know, but she doesn't understand about bones, nothing about bones, you know, but uh, that's the reason why I'm like so <laughs> handsome because she's helping me with that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm 50 years old, but uh, my wife is, is doing some like very good job on my face. So, And then uh, she, obviously, she, she has some friends in the area. So I, I was very well assisted by a, an amazing doctor. He made the surgery two days after I, I go back. I went back to Brazil. I broke the leg on the Monday. And on Friday, I went, I went through the surgery. You know, but uh, that was very tough. Like the, 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 the first moment that I had to fly back to Brazil with the broken leg, that was just terrible. You know, like the guys, the doctors in the U.S., they didn't, they didn't give me any kind of painkiller. I was just taking aspirin and ibuprofen. And I, I had two, the two bones that were broken, the fibula and the tibia. And that was hurting like hell. <laughs> and then I went, I went through the surgery. I put a metal plate. The metal plate comes from here, the knee, until here. So it's... Um, and, man, that was difficult at the beginning because, like, we had to cancel... Uh, some shows in U.S. and then we had to cancel our Mexican tour, and I didn't know how was like how was I was supposed to come back to the drums. The doctor said like, uh, like I did everything that I could, but uh, each body is a different body. Each person is a different person, so we never know what's going to happen to you. You might like recover 100 percent or 90 percent, 80 percent. We never know. You can have all the movements back or maybe not. So that was like, oh my God, really. So um, I spent like the two months after the surgery just like working hard with my right leg. I did everything that the doctor told me to do. So I was like, like respecting and doing everything that I could. And after two months that I had the surgery, I went with Sepultura to the tour, but I couldn't barely walk. 
because I just like before the tour, the doctor said, man, you are really traveling because I had a, a big discussion with my wife and the doctor, my mom. They were like, you're not going to the tour. And I was like, fuck yes, I'm going. <laughs> and uh, they were like, no, you cannot go. Like, I'm telling you guys, I'm going. I'm going to play with my left leg. So you guys can relax. I'm not going to use my right leg. They were like, no, you're not going. I'm going. It's my problem. It's my business. I'm going. And um, so the doctor on the last week, he was like, okay, that's not a, the, the perfect time for you to go back walking, but uh, let's walk. Let's see what happens. Because how am I going to send you to re Europe without walking? So I said, okay. And then I started walking just one week before uh, I went to the tour. And one day before I leave my house, the doctor came to my studio and he said, like, play the drums with your right leg. I'm like, no, man, it's broken. He's like, no, I'm telling you, you can play the drums. And then I, I could start playing the drums just like two days, a couple of days before I travel. I go on tour. So then I travel. Mostly of the songs I was playing with my right, left leg. And other songs I was playing with my, like, like three or four songs I was playing with the, the, the broken leg. You know, but I was playing softer. You know, and I can tell you that now my leg is 100% back. It's uh, completely healed. I have the power again, the, the speed of the movement. So I was very lucky. But the thing is that I, I was very well assisted in Brazil by the doctor and the physiotherapist. You know, like, uh, so I have the conditions to be well assisted. And also because of Sepultura, because like the, we, 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 we work like a company, like business. So I have like all the support from them as well. So let's go through the best uh, treatment that I, uh, you, you can have, Eloy. That's what they told me. So I was very lucky to have that in my life. You know, like in Brazil, we have like a, a public health system. It's very good. But if I have to wait for them, maybe I, I could like, I was waiting until today to go under a surgery, mm -hmm. you know? So I had lucky. That's what I can tell you. Se rompió la pierna en abril en Estados Unidos, en El Paso, Después de wow. dos días. I, I spoke a lot. No, I know, I know, but <laughs> I'm just going to summarize it, just okay. the highlights. Uh, um, he broke his leg, now he's good. Muy en resumen, claro, en Estados Unidos no lo pudieron atender bien rápido, se fue a Brasil, lo operaron y estuvo. Two months were you recovering before? Uh -huh. Yeah, estuvo dos meses recuperándose. Eh, su esposa es cirujana plástica, que es suerte. You are a lucky guy. Yeah. You're really nice. Um, uh. eh, entonces estuvo dos meses y por suerte tiene muchos amigos, su esposa, muchos amigos fisioterapeutas que lo ayudaron. Eh, Sepultura lo apoyó mucho también. Le dijo, consigamos a los mejores que te puedan ayudar en poco tiempo. Y ya él se estaba preparando para ir en tour después de dos meses de haber roto su pierna. Um, y en realidad el doctor le dijo, ok. Él dijo, obviamente voy a ir. Todos le decían que no. Su madre, su esposa, su doctor le decían que no fuera. Pero él dijo, ok, es mi problema, yo voy a ir. Y el doctor una semana antes de, eh, de ir a, de gira le, le hizo caminar, se dio cuenta que podía, y dos días antes de irse de gira le dijo, ok, vamos a tocar batería. Y hoy le dijo, ok, voy a tocar con mi pierna izquierda. Le dijo, no, toca con tu pierna derecha. Y tocó con su pierna derecha y hoy en día ya tiene su pierna 100% recuperada. Wow. Perfect. Nice. Uh, so now I'm going to play some more songs, right? Um, I'm going to play four or five songs, I don't know. I'm going to check what I have in there. And, uh, oh, I need to change the, the symbol setup because I, I use uh, some different symbols with Sepultura and in with the, the other project that I have. Yeah, este viene acá. I'm, I'm going to help you. Uh, if you guys want, you can have, like, one question and like because I'm going to be... Uh, changing the symbols so I can answer for you. One more. The, who, who has the best question? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. See, si esto. No, it, it was it was without the. Mientras cambia su platillo, dice que puede recibir una pregunta más. Chiquillos, ¿ya? Vamos. You choose, you choose. Sí, allá. Dale nomás, brother. Ahí él te escucha.
consejo para un proyecto solista a uno como baterista? What I do to write, like to 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 write material for my both bands. Oh, it's missing the the hi hat here. I need you to put the the hi hat. Where's the other symbol? Oh, the other symbol is here. Yeah, I ah, because I, I had a problem with my symbols, guys. I lost some of them in Colombia. Not me, my drum tech. The motherfuckers, Bruno. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, not you. This guy's cool. This guy's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, in my drum tech, I don't know what happened because there was like so many bands playing together, and he just lost like two symbols that I use here for the for the the stack. So now I'm improvising some stuff, you know. So that's how. Like, <laughs> but now I'm I'm back. Now I'm good. So going back to the question, man. Um, I'm always what I do like to to be creative and to, to create all like the, the music for my bands is to listen to other musicians playing, you know, to, to have like a different references from different musicians, from different music styles. That's what I do the most. And um, also uh, searching for new uh, ways of playing the drums. The things that I, I was telling you guys before, all those patterns, through that, like finding new ways of, of uh, being myself or uh, reinventing myself, that's the way how, how I create new elements of, for new songs, for new music. You know, like different, finding different solutions. So that's how I do it. Also, something that really helps me to be more like creative um, is to experience different uh, form art, uh, art, um, forms of art. I like. I really like to go to the museums, to read books. This really gives me some different uh, inspirations to to sit on the drums and to play in a different way. You know, uh, when I read some like some books, they were very important for me. For my, I, oh, oh, oh. they were very important for me, and then then that changed a little bit my mindset and the way that I was looking to the drums. You know, why I cannot like apply the same thing that I was reading? I can sit on the drums and play like that like the, the same feeling that I had reading a book or seeing or looking at a painting, at the museum, you know, how can I sit and apply that to the drums? You know, really trying to create uh, an art, art form uh, of playing the drums, you know? And, um, and, and but that, that's something that I, I, I like to do. Oh, yeah, let's put it more to the, the right side. Let's take my computer out of there because I'm, or I'm gonna destroy it. Yes, the more to the right and, and down here, please. Yes, please. And so, oh, thank you. And so, and also, I get tired of playing the same thing every day. Uh, I really don't like to be the same person every day, the same musician. So I always like to challenge myself to create new stuff, to cr create new music, find new new solutions, new ways, new paths. You know, so. That's something that I, I, I like to do. You know, there's, there's difficult to answer what you just asked it to me, you know, because th that's something that, ju that just comes out, you know. Él dice que crea nueva música tratando de crear nuevas soluciones, tratando de crear algo nuevo, de encontrar nuevas ideas, pero lo que encuentro más llamativo es que él dice que él trata de buscar otras formas de arte para inspirarse. Por ejemplo, él va a museos, él lee libros, y dice que quiere plasmar lo que él siente leyendo un libro, por ejemplo, en una parte específica, de manera musical. Sí, 
que no están en las posiciones donde acostumbra ser. Excusas falsas. Voy a tocar una canción. Voy a tocar una canción que no toca mucho, Pentagram.
Gracias a todos por venir. Vamos ahora a hacer una foto, ¿sí? Pero no acá, arriba. Vamos a hacer acá la, la foto. It's too dark to make. Ah, sí. Ah, sí, sí. Ah, y solo para complementar, muchas gracias, Music Hall Chile, por invitarme para tocar acá. Sergio, muchas gracias, Sergio. Rodrigo, para Diego. Diego, muchas gracias. ¿Cómo? Fa Falco. Entomos. Franco, muchas gracias, hermano. Uh, mi drum tech. Drum Tech, muchas gracias hermano, you rock bro Y muchas gracias a ustedes, uh, muchas gracias también para mi sponsors okay? uh, Evans, Drumheads, they are the only one who can like, take the power of metal drumming <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but, uh, Too cheesy, but uh, Evans, they are very good, have been using this brand since forever Promark Sticks, they are the best as well I love these brands. Uh, Evans, they are always like evolving, always bring the new technology for the drummers. And of course, Yamaha drums, the electronic drums that I use. I'm not going to say the name of these drums, okay, that I use, but uh, I'm stay quiet. And Pisces cymbals. And, and that's it. Muchas gracias a todos. Hasta la próxima. Quería, eh, eso, quería agregar un detalle. Eh.